Okay, I've uh, cleared my throat, and um, we're going to move to the next uh, topic. This is, uh, I'm going to put it here, uh, introduction. DSRA uh, affects uh, uh, total cost. And that affects the the uh, debt to capital, but the debt to capital affects sculpting SC. And finally, the sculpting drives uh, the cost. So we can have an effect when we uh, put the uh, uh, maximum debt to capital constraint in. Also, DSRA affects interest income. Interest income is part part of CFADS, and then CFADS affects sculpting, and so we have another uh, circular reference here. So we're going to have two circular references when we introduce our uh, um, uh, DSRA. Now, I put uh, interest rate that varies from 1 to year 4, and then 5 to 9, and then 10 onwards, and a different DSCR target, 20-year life. And we put a DSRA months of 6 or 12 or 0, which um, We'll have to show you how that works. But, oops. Uh, and that, since we're assuming semi-annual, I didn't tell you we were, but we are. Uh, we're having that. Now, before we put interest income rate here, we won't have a big problem. And then before we introduce the project uh, uh, cost and max to debt to capital, we won't have a problem. So. Start by just putting a debt period of less than 20 years, just a round up since we're doing a semi annual. Um, I looked up the, the, the growth rate and increased that. Looked up the growth rate, I think, divided by two. Put a target debt service with a lookup. Target debt service uh, uh, amount is, is this. And then this is a little tricky. I think I'm going to do this again. It, it, when we want to do the uh, DSRA, we can first put the offset. Offset. And then we can go up to the target debt service. Keep it on the same row, but move it across one column, because you're going to start one column in the future. Make it one height, but make the width here the number of DSRA periods. Now that works, except if we put the width 12, then it, we have a length of 2, and what we have to do is just sum this amount. Okay, so we can first do that. Now, I obviously didn't press the F4, so, whoops, uh-oh, just a minute, no, oh. hmm. Worked. Okay, and the only other problem we have here is that if we put zero months, it doesn't like that because we can't have zero as our column, so I'm just going to put an error there and make it uh, zero. So now we have our kind of starting point, and I'll put in the SRA months of six to kind of get, our, get us all started. Um, so far, 
if we would, uh, let's put an interest rate index. You know what I should do is, is when I do this, kind of move it up a little. And, and we uh, will take this one and multiply it by 1 plus the, plus the uh, interest rate. And we'll use that as our discounting. I didn't put the interest rate here yet. We have to review that then. Look up. Okay, and we look up the period, uh, uh, the year. Excuse me. We'll get the interest rate from this and that, and we'll divide it by two. Okay. Shift control P, shift control R, and now we'll uh, put one plus the interest index in, and we uh, have our interest index, and then we can uh, get the the uh, PV that service from sculpting. That is some product of all of the target debt service divided by this. And so far, we have absolutely no problem with the DSRA account. In fact, uh, if we put our little uh, debt balance in here, we could use the what happens is uh, uh, you can use the final period of the um, DSRA to actually uh, uh, let's put chain cash flow. I didn't finish my sentence just now. Okay, and and the, that is the. So we put minus this, and actually that's a, a minus, so we should really do it this way. Okay, so we have to use some cash flow to build up our DSRA, but the big deal is at the very last period, when we have a uh, target debt service of this, and have exactly this amount in the debt service at the reserve account. So we could put cash flow. Okay. And then we uh, get our uh, cash flow. Uh, and we'll put our total cash flow. Now I'm not going to if you got, I've heard some people actually say, well, you should adjust the debt service coverage ratio for the change in the DSA RA. If you do that, yeah, that creates a little bit of a messy circular reference problem, but we could resolve it. I don't usually see that, so I'm not going to really worry about it. And um, we put the opening debt balance. Plus the payment closing that balance and um, interest. Okay, of course, start with this. Our opening debt balance is is uh, equal to our closing. Our our repayment, as always, is is the total target debt service minus the interest. We have the closing balance, and I'm going to just talk a little bit about the uh, paying that last, uh, oops, paying that last DSRA, or that last debt service in, the, in this very last year. Uh, 
just a minute. Why, 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 uh, oh, our target, that service includes a little bit of interest. So, the repayment of the debt, um, is, is there, but we just use this cash flow. I don't really think it matters which cash flow you use, does it? You get that extra cash flow, and you just use that to pay the last debt, uh, uh, the last bit of debt off. You know, I think you could almost argue that you could increase the um, you could you could have a, a a little mini kind of bullet payment right here. You could have a, a bullet payment right here of, because you've got this extra uh, cash flow and um, I'm going to come back to that one because right now I think we uh, we we need to put a, uh, we need to be able to model model a bullet payment into our uh, uh, debt service uh, into our into our thing. So what happens here is we just. Uh, um, Uh, reduce the we'd have to reduce the payments over time so let me just I'm rambling a little bit but we'll put seventh exercise uh, include a bullet repayment okay and uh, but for now so the the key thing is right now we have no big uh, circular reference problems, nothing exciting really happening. But now let's make it a little different and let's compute our debt to capital. Now I have too much. Let's let's say we have two thousand of debt and that would that means we have a maximum debt of of uh, 1,600 and we have computed uh, this much debt so we can do the same again this is um, apologize for a little bit of redundancy here CFADS over uh, debt tenor okay uh, I should have probably not made you uh, do all of this. I'm going to have to think through with these uh, courses, by the way. I'm, uh, uh, I'm going to give you a blank uh, spreadsheet so you can work through these issues. Then I'm going to give you a test. And if you pass the test, I'm going to give you a special certificate, as if that means anything. You can put it on the resume or something. And then we can put in... Uh, some product like we did before of all of the uh, cash flow and divide that by the uh, interest rate factor so we we get this is the PV of the debt service and then LLCR using maximum debt to capital now we have to just make one adjustment to this because I said project cost, and then what we'll have to do is add to the project cost the DSRA. And uh, the DSRA is, is right here. And so our maximum debt we're allowed is actually the project cost plus the DSRA times the 80%. Okay, now when I uh, put the LLCR as the uh, CFADS divided by the debt, it's still okay. Don't, okay, it's still okay. And uh, you know what I'm going to do here is cheat. Okay, we'll just use the same uh, DSRA. But 
if we have a maximum debt to uh, capital ratio, we'll take the the uh, applied PSCR for target debt service. Now, it as this is computed just from below, we put a maximum of this or, or that. Okay, so far okay. But if I use this number here in the uh, thing, now, <laughs> just a minute. I was expecting a circular reference. And I think I have one. I just had the iteration button on. Okay. That's very bad that we had that on. So you can uh, you can kind of see we have this expected uh, circular reference problem. Now if we wanted to fix that problem, we could put a, a, a fixed amount here. Let's say we put 80 as a fixed. And then the difference between the computed uh, DSRA down here and the fixed. Oops. And then we could, uh, well, I'm, I'm, how about we put the computed up here? So this is fixed. And computed. And the difference. Now, if we uh, make this thing equal to the fixed amount, then we could uh, copy the computer to the fixed, edit, paste special, and we get close, and then we do it again, and that would be a very easy, um, it would be a very easy, uh, copy and paste macro okay but I would like to make a little uh, function for the DSRA we'll see for right now you could say ah, it would have been easier it's uh, be lazy just make a little copy and paste I'm not gonna okay what the heck I'll do it um, so we have uh, fixed computed and difference shift control F3, and we just simply make a, a macro. Why people would think they would have to hide such a macro again is, is just beyond me. But uh, I, I make it private somehow, somehow, you know. So we have this uh, period of the year thing here, and we can put sub ESRA resolve or something. And we put uh, range uh, fixed equal range computed. And we go around for well, well range uh, difference is uh, not equal to zero. W E N D, and uh, that's not as fast as long as it takes. Okay, but what we're going to do is is uh, work on a function for this. Okay, and let's just uh, show you that this one works. I hope it does, and you know the crucial thing I should do is well no I took the excuse me I did take the uh, whatever iteration button out now if we again put this as as just a number okay and we, we're, we're getting the circular reference what we have to do is make a function and in our function we have to uh, let's see uh, 
uh, we need to compute the um, DSRA, D DSRA, and then using the DSRA, we have to compute the the. Uh, so we have to read in the maximum debt to capital um, uh, uh, number. We also have to read in the project cost. Then we'll get the maximum debt to cap. And then once we get the maximum debt to cap, then we have to go through. It's a whole lot more painful, no question about it. We have to compute the target debt service. And then we can take that target debt service. And we can, uh, I guess we can just in this one, just compute the first target debt service. And uh, finally, we need all of the cash flows to get the LLCR, and we'll need the target LLCR as well as the the other one. So let's go and just start trying to write this function. It is a pain, but it's, I think, you'll see it's not worth it for this one, but it will be... Uh, we'll we'll just make a function called DSI, okay? And we'll uh, we'll start reading the things into the function, okay? And the the final thing we have to do is say DSI equals uh, it's going to equal the uh, debt service. It's actually going to be if we want to make it really fancy. We'll uh, we'll put a worksheet function. Oh, let's see if this works. Actually, put the uh, sum. Oops. And then we put worksheet function, and we put offset. Does that not work? Okay. Um, well, actually, uh, uh, right. With the, uh, excuse me. With the DSRA, we have to we have to make a little loop. We have to go four i equals one two d s. Periods. Okay, and that means we need to read the DSRA. Now, here's what I'm going to suggest you do. I'm going to suggest that whenever we have a function that we know is going to be a painful one, we want to just read in the entire debt period because we're, we we want to be able to sum all we want to have the debt service over the entire debt period and we want to click in and get this entire uh, uh, row and then we want to get this entire row to have to always press F4 and do all that kind of crap really I think a painful thing okay and so uh, here's my suggestion Okay, in the on the disk and in the macros, I put something called a little function called read array. It just reads in a switch and then just finds what the start period is and period. So it's not a very good explanation. Uh, let's look at it. Okay, and we take our read array. Let's copy that and put that into our new little exercise. Now I'm going to take this out and read in the debt switch. And what that means is, uh, and I think we have to do this and what I did here is allow you uh, to to uh, put 
multiple uh, outputs in, in the model. So we'll put a option base one, which is an important thing to do whenever we have this <coughs> stuff. And we'll put the debt switch. And we just find out when the start of the debt is. And then we'll go to the debt switch again and get the end of the debt switch. Okay. And <sighs> so now we'll, uh, once we have this, we can uh, go from the. Uh, Okay, we can make a little counter that goes from one to uh, however many debt DSRA periods we have. So maybe that's the next one we'll read. say, well, our DSRA, so if this is, it's going to be one to one, DSR, whoops, DSRA equals DSR equals equals DSRA plus plus the uh, target uh, debt service in I. So we'll need a variable that gets our target debt service, and let's make a dimension for that. So I hope you can see, here's what I hope you really can see, uh, is that you just, uh, let's make it, at least say a thousand. Uh, we can make it as a single, I guess. Um, actually, it's better as it is. This, this stuff sometimes works a little better if it's a double. Okay. So, um, we're just going backwards. We're just starting at the end. And that's, that's going to be uh, what we define as our output. Okay. And then, huh, going backwards, if we look at our, our model, okay, uh, then we need, um, uh, sorry about this, okay, to get the, the, the DSRA, we need the target debt service, okay, and we'll go from, uh, and uh, I did something wrong just now, which is a good exercise that I did it wrong. Whenever we do things, we're going to go from the uh, start debt to the end debt. Oops. Sorry. That's not what I wanted to do. our target debt service. So this time we go for I equal one no start debt to <coughs> and debt. Okay, and we put target debt service for I equals K 
cash flow, and we're going to read that in as an array, divided by target DSCR. So, if we do that, we've got a, uh, we can, uh, um, I'm sorry, I'm going slowly here, but uh, if we do that, if we get this target, that service, we can use it down here, and then we can get our DSRA, okay, which is just an accumulation of all the debt service, and this time it would just be one, the next period's debt service. But unfortunately, we have to go through this whole thing in order just to uh, uh, resolve the debt service, uh, resolve the, the circular reference. So it seems like, oh, well, geez, isn't it immensely much easier to just um, put in a, a, a circular reference resolve? And you might say yes, but you know, then you're not going to be able to do goal seek. You're not going to be able to do a lot of the scenario analysis. You're not going to be able to do a whole bunch of things. So it's immensely much easier. You're going to have to, you, there are fixes. You'd have to uh, kind of, uh, 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 you know, add little macros all over the place and, and redo the goal seed each time. So that's, so please, even though this looks painful, and it is painful, there's no question about it. Uh, uh, I'm trying to illustrate that uh, that it's it's worthwhile, and that if you just start at the end, kind of like what we're doing, that's kind of the the right way to do it. Now, what that means is we better read in the cash flow, and I, I'm actually going to read in the cash flow right away. Okay, right after that, and then we uh, and again this time we can read the whole line item for the cash flow. That's the uh, uh, that's the idea, okay? And then now the problem is we have to get the target DSCR. And the target uh, DSCR is equal to the max worksheet function uh, dot maximum of the uh, input DSCR. Or the I'll call it LLCR DSC. I'll call it debt to cap LLCR. Okay, and we'll first read in the input uh, uh, DSCR. Okay. And then we have to now go and compute the uh, DSCR over the uh, uh, entire period. Now to get that, unfortunately, we have to get the NPV. So the, the we'll keep going backwards, and uh, and you can see what we're eventually going to do is have to have a little loop that goes around this um, and and solves it. But the debt to cap LLCR equals NPV of cash flow divided by project cost. And the project cost, we better put if project cost is greater than, is not equal to zero. Whenever I almost think whenever you have a divide divide button, you should do that. Not them then. Okay. And uh, additionally, we should really do it here. Because I'm sure I misspelled some things. And 
<sighs> I don't want a real mess on our hands. <clears throat> so what we need to do is put our project cost. Let's do the easy part. Equal base cost. How's that? Plus DSRA. And the DSRA comes from below, but you need to read in the base cost. So we just kind of go back and, uh, and uh, reprogram the, the uh, Excel formulas. And then what we need to do is have the NPV of cash flow Unfortunately, well, I'm debating whether we should have a separate loop for this. Okay, I think. Um, oh God, what, what, NPV. No, we don't. Here, here, NPV of cash flow. some product now uh, we can't really do this some product that's the problem uh, we because we only have to do it over the, the, the period so uh, I don't like this but that doesn't really matter for again let's let's just do it from the start debt to the end debt again that's when we do it for the LLCR okay And the NPV of the cash flow is the, the, the uh, NPV of cash flow plus, when, and whenever we do this, we've got to really be very careful about something here, too. This uh, DSRA, whenever we're accumulating just right before a loop, we better put the DSRA equals zero. And then uh, kind of uh, do it like that. Okay. And NPV of cash flow is NPV of cash flow plus. Take the uh, cash flow in period I and divide that by the oops, interest index in period I, which we don't have yet, so we're also going to have to get the interest index. Or Let's get the interest rate. And when we get the interest rate, then we'll we'll first uh, we'll put oops up here. We'll put an interest index equals one, and uh, interest index equals one equals interest index. How about uh, uh, that minus one? It's almost like we did it in the and then interest index I equal interest index. I minus one times uh, one plus the interest rate. So we'll read in a whole other array. Okay. Whoops. And how did it know that that was an array? But okay. And uh, the uh, we'll put a dimension. As the okay, 
Okay. So we're uh, we're getting there. I hope because now we uh, now that we have the end PB of the 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 now that we have the NPV of the cash flow, okay, which again better set to zero. I hope I'm getting a tiny bit better at this. I'm probably not. And then uh, um, let's just walk through it. So. We start with our, we got our base cost plus the DSRA, which we don't know yet. We get our uh, interest rate index, and then we get our net pre present value of uh, the cash flow. We read in the cash flow and read in the interest uh, rates to get everything. <sighs> then we compute our debt to capital LLCR, and then we get our maximum DSCR or LLCR, depending on which one we use. And then we use that to get the target de debt service. Uh, and then once we have the target debt service, we, uh, we, we, uh, we can uh, compute the DSRA, and then we'll have to go around about it. So what we'll have to do up here is put for iteration equal 1 to 10 for now. Later we'll uh, fix this. Okay, and we can put a nice little test to, to make sure that the, to see what happens to the last DSRA compared to this DSRA. And uh, how about I'll put uh, Let's put uh, DSRA function. I'm going to call this a different. Uh, and then I think because then we can uh, here I put let's put the first output as the DSRA. Okay, and then we put. Uh, DSRA function equals the output. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is is and then it gives us the start period, the end period, and why don't we get something that might be nice? The, how about the uh, how about on this one? Let's get the uh, LLCR debt to cap LLCR. And then let's get the um, uh, uh, how about the NPV of the cash flow? And then let's get uh, uh, who we don't really need the project cost, do we? How about we'll put the target? Yes, yeah. Okay, and what that does now, what this does is if you made your function named a variant up here, okay, and we uh, uh, apparently, maybe, I, yeah, I think I had to do that. Then we uh, say we just want to report four different outputs and that's a very helpful thing to do for me when I make uh, errors and then we just define our function as that so that's our our function okay it was a little bit of a pain it took probably how long I'm gonna look on here how long it took it took a uh, 40 minutes shit okay but I'm gonna pause and uh, uh, Oh, I swore it. Oh, damn. Uh, uh, and uh, tested it. Okay, I made a couple mistakes, but it really, really wasn't that bad. And 
uh, the first one is I needed to read in the maximum debt to capital, and we uh, we needed to make the the debt the LLCR based on the debt from the, the project cost, not the project cost itself. So we read that in, and then we find the uh, LLCR. The other thing is I had a spelling mistake on that present value of the cash flow. Uh, that wasn't that big a deal. So so I'm gonna kind of show you how you do this now and why that first part is kind of good. So DSRA function, shift F3, debt switch, you know, isn't it a whole lot easier just to click on this? Cash flow, isn't it a whole lot easier just to click on the cash flow? DSRA periods, uh, that was, you know, just what we had uh, talked about. Input DSRA, remember, I this, this doesn't really work uh, with a uh, changing DSRA. I think we could uh, program it actually, but uh, and then finally uh, we need to put the uh, interest rate in. I said finally because I forgot about that. So shift spacebar if you want the whole thing. And the debt to capital. Okay, and we press OK. Oh, shift control enter, I guess. No, F2, shift control enter. And then it gives us that 1.28 that was we kind of looked for. That's our LLCR. It gives us the DSRA we really want. And this was the uh, NPV of all the CFADS up here. So I think this little technique to kind of check your work is uh, probably a good uh, practice, don't you? And then we can just take this from our DSRA function, and we have no problem. So if I want to change the interest rate, put 10% interest rate at the beginning or something like that, or 5% interest rate, everything changes. There's no ne necessity to change the function if I put a 10% here. Uh, growth rate, we got a smaller DSRA, I guess uh, we're still up, to, uh, up with that constraint. You know, if I put this as uh, 1.5, 1. 1. then we'll get a lower amount still because uh, that's our constraint now instead of the instead of that 1.2 uh, so that all works and if you're really doing a lot of analysis I know it looks like a pain but I think it really uh, helps and I think uh, even though so far it's still a simple analysis this is a, a, f a fairly realistic uh, portrayal of, of what you could have and you, you could imagine uh, it wouldn't be that much more difficult to add in a whole lot of other stuff. So that's a long enough uh, 